the second case is Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., known by his stage name as Lil Wayne, who's 30. He is an American hip-hop recording artist from New Orleans, Louisiana. In October of 2012, it was reported on TMZ that he was doing better after an in-flight medical scare on Thursday afternoon that had forced the rapper to make an emergency landing in Texas. After he had suffered seizure-like symptoms on a private jet, the craft landed in an undisclosed location in Texas. From there, he was taken to a local hospital and treated for several hours before being released around 6 p.m. local time. His rep had no comment about the incident, and as of press time, further information was not released. Within 24 hours, he had another seizure on another flight. TMZ had said he was on a flight from Texas when he was diverted after su suffering another seizure on board to Los Angeles. He was then taken to the hospital at mid-afternoon. He was still being treated in a Louisiana hospital, but was expected to be released Friday afternoon. They attributed it to dehydration and migraines. In November, it was reported that he had been banned from flying for the foreseeable future by his physicians, but just recently, within the last two weeks, he was rushed to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles after collapsing while filming a music video for Nicki Minaj called High School. He was released on Wednesday, but according to TMZ, just hours later, one of his bodyguards found him in his room on the floor and unconscious. He was rushed to the hospital again. This time he did not stabilize. He was taken to ICU where he was placed in restraints because he was shaking uncontrollably. He was then put in an induced coma in intensive care where his condition continued to be unstable. The cause of the seizures was unclear, and MTV actually interviewed a neurologist who was not treating him but commented, on the cause of seizures, and this neurologist stated some people have unrecognized structural abnormalities in their brain or a prior history of trauma that is enough to create an electrical disturbance. But I'd probably say if you were his age and you were coming into my office with your first seizure, in half those people you won't find a reason. Barring a family history, the neurologist said there are also some other non-specific irritants that can produce seizures. And one of those nonspecific irritants, according to the Atomic Archive, is radiation exposure. Is that correct? That's correct. And he fits into what um, I have been able to um, discover through very extensive research since the Fukushima disaster in March of 2011. And that is that there's been a very large increase in death rates in the United States as a result of Fukushima exposure. In other words, the Centers for Disease Control, they collect, it's a government agency, and they collect uh, vital statistics, health data, from every county in the United States every week. And that is compiled in their archives and data files. It's also posted on the Internet but it's just piles of numbers, and most people would not be able to make sense out of it. But what those numbers say, and this is our own government collecting this information and not releasing it to the public, is that 100,000 Americans had died by Christmas of 2011, less than nine months after Fukushima, uh, and unexplained uh, unexplained reason or cause. And when I looked at the uh, large increase in death rates, the highest increase was in the mountain region, which is the west slope of the Rocky Mountains, and it was 10%, a 10% increase in death rates. But when I looked at the state of Texas, this is what gave me the clue um, and I looked at the age groups that had the highest increase in death rates. It was not the elderly people. It was the youngest people. It was teenagers in the, like, 18 to 30 age group, and uh, young teenagers and young adults. And I went, oh, my God, there are so many military bases in Texas 
the soldiers who came back from Iraq and Afghanistan loaded with fission products from the many nukes that the U.S. has been using since 1990 in Iraq and later in Afghanistan. These are launched from howitzers, and which is a very large, it's like a cannon that shoots big caliber uh, projectiles. And the mini nukes are in those projectiles. And when I looked at the uh, largest increase in deaths, an 18% increase for that age group in Texas, I said it's got to be the soldiers coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. And they end up staying. Uh, they have to get out of the military because they're dying. But they stay near the bases they came back to so they can get medical care. And so what's happened is we're we're seeing all these young people, celebrities, with these radiation-related illnesses, damage to the endocrine system, um, and uh, it's because they were exposed in utero to nuclear bomb tests, which ended in 1963, Uh, But there was still radiation in the environment, and also their parents had altered DNA because their their bodies were the parents' bodies were contaminated with radiation, and the DNA and the sperm and the eggs were very often altered. Um, Then they turned on the nuclear power program, and that further exposed. Uh, unborn children, uh, the the reproductive tissues of of uh, adults or young adults, and uh, so that was the second big assault on the bodies of Americans. And every single person in the United States was exposed internally to ionizing radiation from the nuclear bomb tests, and with the nuclear power plants. Um, the highest rates of breast cancer in the United States were two-thirds of all the breast cancer deaths in the U.S. occurred in certain counties, and I've given you a map of that. Um, we, we crunched the numbers, the uh, Radiation and Public Health Project, a small group of scientists independently did this, and made this map of breast cancer rates mortality rates in the United States, and uh, it correlates exactly and precisely with uh, the locations within 100 miles of uh, reactors, and that is the nuclear uh, bomb factories like Los Alamos Nuclear Weapons Lab in New Mexico, Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab in the U.S., and the Idaho Nuclear Engineering Lab in Idaho, and that's, by the way, where the Stuxnet virus was written that triggered Fukushima. And that was written by the CIA and a team from Germany from the Siemens um, Electronics Corporation. They make the controllers uh, in nuclear power plants and other power plants. And in uh, the 1990s, even before that, Depleted uranium was introduced to military arsenals, and all of our military bases, bombing ranges, and gunnery ranges are all contaminated. Now, um, little, little, what's his name? William? No, little, little Wayne. Little Wayne is from New Orleans. All that depleted uranium and the fission products from Iraq and Afghanistan all come across the Atlantic in these hurricanes that originate in the Sahara Desert in North Africa. And they're loaded with depleted uranium and fission products. And the heaviest rain out of that radioactive material is along the Gulf Coast states. So little Wayne, um, his parents would have been exposed to nuclear bomb tests. He would have been exposed to, after he was born, to... um, nuclear power plant fission products that contaminate food and water and dairy products uh, in Louisiana. They have big ones there, uh, big nuclear power plants. And then 
he would have been exposed to all the DU and fission products coming across in hurricanes and being rained out along the Louisiana Gulf Coast. So um, this poor guy and and people living on the, the West Coast, too, we have nuclear power plants here, like Kim Kardashian was, it, was absolutely exposed to those, uh, Diablo Canyon and San Onofre. And uh, so these poor young people who should be healthy um, are the first to go down because uh, just an additional very small exposure uh, wipes them out. I want to run through a, cr- a quick list of um, what radiation exposure can do to the body. In terms of hair, the losing of hair quickly and in clumps occurs with radiation exposure at 200 rems or higher. The brain, since brain cells do not reproduce, they won't be d- damaged directly unless the exposure is 5,000 rems or greater, like the heart radiation kills nerve cells and small blood vessels and can cause seizures and immediate death. The thyroid, certain body parts are more specifically affected by exposure to different types of radiation sources. The thyroid gland is susceptible to radioactive iodine. In sufficient amounts, radioactive iodine can destroy all or part of the thyroid. By taking potassium iodide, one can reduce the effects. The blood system, When a person is exposed to around 100 rems, the blood's lymphocyte cell count will be reduced, leaving the victim more susceptible to infection. This is often referred to as a mild radiation sickness. Early symptoms of radiation sickness mimic those of the flu and may go unnoticed unless blood count is done. According to data from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, shows that symptoms may persist for up to 10 years and may also have an increased long-term risk for leukemia and lymphoma. The heart. Intense exposure to radioactive material at 1,000 to 5,000 rems would do immediate damage to small blood vessels and probably cause heart failure and death directly. The gastrointestinal tract. Radiation damage to the intestinal tract lining will cause nausea, bloody vomiting, and diarrhea. This occurs when the victim's exposure is 200 rems or more. The radiation will begin to destroy the cells in the body that divide rapidly. These include blood, GI tract, reproductive and hair cells, and harms their DNA and RNA of surviving cells. And then, of course, the reproductive tract. Because reproductive tract cells divide rapidly, these areas of the body can be damaged at rem levels as low as 200. Long-term, some radiation sickness victims will become sterile. Fukushima researchers have been bringing Geiger counters on planes and finding Uh, five times over what would be considered normal. Right. So how how many REMs are they being exposed to? I have no idea. Um, It's very difficult to convert uh, from REMs to Sieverts to... uh, you know, back and forth. They've made all these different units so, to confuse people. Um, but, and each person is very different in how they respond to radiation, and it also depends on the timing, and it also depends on the particular radionuclides. And what they're not mentioning is that there are over 1,900 uh, fission products that are produced in a fission event. Um, Japan is, Fukushima is different. Uh, there was a total meltdown uh, in at least one of the reactors, but uh, what the real problem was, was the burning of the spent fuel rods, which are pure fission products. Well, there's some uranium in them too. Um, but uh, it, this is an unprecedented event, so um, we need to look at the results to figure out what the exposure was or what really happened. It's this is this is unprecedented. Fukushima, the Fukushima disaster, and the global exposure of the entire biosphere has never happened before. Uh, to this extent, and Fukushima was 300 Chernobyls at least. 